Tim Holtz is a signature product designer for Ranger and he knows how to use what he designs. So today I'm going to show you how to make these paper doily pockets using a Tim Holtz Distress Crayon technique for the background. I'm going to use my paper doilies and instead of tea dyeing them or coffee dyeing them, I'm actually going to use the crayons but with no water. I'm going to show you how to make this gorgeous lacy paper doily pocket. It's got two pockets in it or you can close it at the sides like this and make it into a single pocket. You can glue it onto the page like this. So you just glue the back piece down and you can have it as a flip. So you've got two pockets on the inside. You can have it as a left or a right side orientated pocket. You can also stitch it in with your signatures and use it as either a, a flip page or pockets, like a pocket flip page. I picked up these adorable vintage ladies from Christy Art Design Vintage Dress Ladies. And I'll put the link in the description below for you because after you see this, you'll definitely want to get some. And also I printed it out in a different size to my download. And I'll quickly show you how you can change the size. I'm using a Windows computer, so I just left mouse click on these three dots, left mouse click on the print icon, and I left my papers on plain. I used 160 GSM for mine. Then move down to the photo size, left mouse click on the little arrow, change the size to four by six, and then left mouse click on print. Because I'm using an inkjet printer, I totally let my ink dry and then I fussy cut out my ladies. I'll show you the doilies that I'm gonna use. These are the brand Unique and there are eight doilies in the packet. Just be aware that when you choose your doily, some of them have got a pretty basic border around the edge. This one here has got a lovely border. The size is 10 and a quarter inches by 14 or 26 centimeters by 35.5 centimeters. So it's a pretty big oval. Now what I'm going to do just to find my center line, it does make it easier when you do this. Just fold it in half long ways. Then once you've flattened it back out, use that line to keep your pocket square. So I'm going to put that line on my grid board. Now this ruler here, I put the line of my ruler on the same fold line and my grid line of my mat. Then I'm going to make sure that it's in the center. So I've got the same width either side, left and right. Then I'm just going to fold up either side of that doily. I flip it over because I want the pocket to be on the wrong side of the doily and I fold it carefully because if you're too rough you'll rip your lace parts. And I'm going to check it with my ruler to make sure it's square because it's pretty easy to fold these crooked. So it's square down either side and I'll just crease those folds on both sides. Now that becomes my top and bottom and I'm going to sew down the center here. So I'm going to fold it in half so I'm just going to crease it. So I'm just going to duck off to the sewing machine and sew this with a straight stitch. I'm going to trim off my threads and fold it in half again. Now, if you want to use it as two separate pockets for inside pockets, you'd leave it like this. But if you wanted it as a closed pocket, this is where you'd take the extra steps and glue the inside pieces that you fold down just to make sure they stay nice and flat. 
and then you would glue your pocket closed. Now we're going to glue our ladies on using a collage medium or a gel matte medium. I love this vintage collage medium, but I'm not going to use it because I want to keep my white doily white. And this one has this vintage color. So I'm just going to use this transparent matte gel medium. Now this matte gel medium acts like a glue and a sealer. So I'm just protecting my cutting mat with this is just a non-stick mat and I'm going to paint a not a very thick layer just oh, it, you can see how much I've got on my brush here so I'm just sweeping it over and I'm stopping before I get to the lace. And I'm just spreading it all the way over the plain paper part. Now, you know how thin doilies are. It doesn't take much to get it all wet. So I figure maybe I might be better to put a little bit more on the back of the lady just in case I miss some of the areas on the doily. So I've added a little bit extra behind her to make sure she's sticking down really well. You can brush over the top of the lady as well. I just forgot to do it on this one. I, I did do it on the other one. I, I meant to do it here, but I did forget. Now I've put another piece of the non-stick mat inside the pocket, and I'm gonna continue on and spread some more of the gel medium right over the top of the lacy bits. And very gently, because you don't want to tear any of that delicate paper. Now I'm just making sure that I have got good coverage over everything. Anyway, I'm going to leave her to dry now and it's a pretty warmish day here so she doesn't take very long to dry at all. I think I was back in about an hour. Now this paper is totally dry. It's 100% dry and I'm ready to add some colour. I'm going to add my colour while my pocket is folded in half. I'm only going to use three colours. I'm using the antique linen, vintage photo and the hickory smoke. The good thing about using this distress crayon is you don't have to worry about how perfect you are at doing it. I'm just scribbling virtually. So I'm just covering over around the middle part of my lady. And I'm working pretty quickly because I don't want this crayon to dry. So I'm putting my dark color, the vintage photo on the top, and I'm not coloring it in like perfectly, like covering all my white spots, because when I smudge it, they'll all join up. I'm being pretty rough and I'm doing the same at the bottom with the hickory smoke. So now I'm going to start smudging and I'm smudging with my antique linen first because it's the lightest colour and you can see I got a bit carried away there and, and started on the hickory smoke before I was ready to finish on the other side of the light colour so I might as well keep going. But I change fingers. So now I'm changing my finger back to a clean finger and I'll keep on smudging the light linen colour in the centre here. And it doesn't matter if the colours start working together because that's what I want. This is what I'm deliberately trying to do. And you can see with my left hand I'm holding down the doily because this paper is so fine, it moves really easy. And I'm rubbing quite hard with my right hand. So it really wants to move. And it, it'll crease. It'll wrinkle up and move if I don't hold it tight with my left hand. Don't worry if it looks rough. It doesn't matter. You can come back over it with some extra crayon and start smudging again. And I 
oh, my fingers were getting a bit dirty because I've gone from that really light color to the dark. So I'm just using normal baby wipes. The cheapest baby wipes I could find. And I've had these for ages. I just keep them sealed and they keep quite well. Keep on going until you get that look that you're happy with. Now that's enough for my blending for the minute. I'm going to clean up anything that's got on my mat because I want my white pocket to stay white. So I'm going to clean this up. If I was colouring the back, it wouldn't worry me. I'd just leave that there. Now because I'm using Tim Holtz technique, I thought it would be quite fitting if I used some of his stencils as well. If you haven't got any Tim Holtz stencils, just use what you've got. This was one of my mum's and so was this one. So I'm going to use this one as well as Tim Holtz. Now I'm not going to use the whole stencil. I'm going to use parts of it. So I'm just placing the stencil on the edge here and I'm just going to pick this flower here and I'm going to get my baby wipe and I'm going to wipe over that flower with the baby wipe. Now, I'm only concentrating on the inside of that one flower and I'm pressing down with the baby wipe to wipe the crayon colour away. How cool is that? This is such a great technique. Move the stencil around and just pick out any of the leaves or any parts of the flower that you like. You don't have to follow the pattern exactly. Make your own pattern up as you go. This time I'm putting the flower half on the crayon and half on the white part, the lacy part of the doily. Because I'm rubbing away the crayon, when I lift the stencil up, you'll see that the flower has now turned white and it'll blend into the white lacy part of the doily. On the right hand side here. So I'm going to change stencils now and keep going just picking random parts that I, I want to pull out the colour of and I'll keep on moving it around like I've done with the first one and not following any order. Changing stencils again and it, what it does it, it just softens that really hard color. This is a great technique because if you use too much of the stenciling by removing too much color, you can come back with your crayon and add the color back in, smudge it again and cover that up and change it. So now I've finished the stenciling technique. I'm going to distress the edges. I'm just using the baby wipe on its own and I'm just going to gently wipe the edges and only the edges for a minute and see how it's pulling the color off the edges. You've got to be go light handed here. Don't be too heavy handed because you'd be surprised at how much it takes off. You're better off to take off a little bit and then come back and take a bit more if you need to. Once you've gone around the edge, then you can start patting some of that hard color, especially the dark gray here. And when you pat that, it'll give it a scratched look and it just softens it a little bit. So it's not so in your face and it's sort of like scratches. I hope you can see that. It looks so much better in real life, even though it's a different colorway to what I would like to have used. If I had some other colors in these distress crayons, I would have used them. But using what you got, you'd be surprised at the results. So I am pretty happy with these colors and they look great with these tea dyed pages in my journal. So if you've got some distress crayons and you haven't been 100% sure on how to use them, give this one a try because I think you'll be able to do this one. You can be as rough as and it still works out. 
It's the distressed look and that's what makes it easy. Let me know if you've got any of the distressed crayons and recommend what colours I should get next. Ciao for now.